G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. Over the years on this channel, I've managed to offend a lot of people. And if over the years I have offended you, I just want you to know that that was not my intention. Uh, my intention was to offend everybody. And if you're offended that I haven't offended you, then good, because I will get around to you. And this video is gonna be one of those videos. Today, I'll be talking about 10 pieces of astronomy equipment which I believe are completely useless. Of course, this is gonna upset vendors, and so there is no sponsor on this video. But if you wanna buy me a beer, just click on my links I earned from affiliate commissions and, you know, buy a shirt or something. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. paper and cardboard planetariums and star charts. Now, I used to use these when I was about seven years old. Every month I get a new issue of Australian Sky and Telescope, brilliant magazine. I read it cover to cover, but whenever I get to these sections with star charts, I've got to be honest, I just skip them. I can feel the visual purists rolling their eyes, but honestly, we have computers for this stuff. This stuff was generated by a computer and then printed on a dead tree so that we could look at it. I don't look at it. I do enjoy almanacs and I do enjoy having a printed copy of stuff that's going on every year, but I will always defer to the computer, whether it's Stellarium, whether it's the augmented reality sky guide app on my phone or Sky Safari or something like that. We don't need to cut down trees to look at the stars. Piers. I swear to God, so many people leave me comments about you should have had a peer in your observatory, Dylan, or have you considered a peer, or that was really cool, but you should have a peer. Uh, really, people have this fetish about peers, and I don't understand it. I don't want to be in my observatory. I want to be inside remote controlling everything, and if you can afford a peer, and if you set up a peer, that's fine. But you cannot tell, looking from one person's image to another person's image, whether they used a tripod or a peer. If you are polar aligned, and if you're all stable and level, it doesn't doesn't make a difference to the end result. And unless something is gonna make a difference to the end result of my process, I don't see the reason to spend a whole lot of money on it. Next on the list are power bricks. You know the power bricks that you get with cameras and sometimes the vendor will give you a power brick, sometimes they don't, sometimes it's a real custom one that doesn't fit in anything else except that particular product. Here's an old one from a brand I won't dob in, but it comes with not one, but two power bricks. And you know what I'm talking about. When they make this bit just a little too big so that you can't plug anything next to it either. That's a huge pet peeve of mine. Thankfully, the power situation in astronomy is improving. The next item on the list are feather touch focuses. These are really expensive devices that you do not need to buy. I mean, you can if you want to, if you're a uh, classicist who wants everything nice and brand specific on your particular telescope, but you can replicate what a feather touch focuser does either with a clothes peg or a bolt or a piece of foam that goes over the knob. You just have to reduce that gear ratio on the knob itself by making the knob bigger. That will get you pretty much the same effect. If you're manually focusing anyway, will it affect the quality of your images at the end of the day, whether you use a feather touch focuser from a particular brand or a clothes peg? I don't think so. Look at this, it's not Attic's fault, it's just luminance filters in general. This bad boy has never left its case. I mean, you can use a luminance filter if you want to. It's a broad spectrum filter, so it's going to take basically the whole visual spectrum. But in astronomy, we actually sometimes want more than the visual spectrum. We do like the bleed over into infrared and we will modify our cameras to catch that. So why would we put a luminance filter on there to shave that off in the first place? Uh, what I tend to do in my filter wheel is I just leave the luminance filter blank. So number one in my filter wheel typically is empty. If I want a broadband exposure of a planet or a deep space object, I will take the whole spectrum. If you need to improve contrast, you can do that in post, or if you want a more specific light pollution filter, you can throw that in the number one luminance filter spot anyway. So luminance filters, I've never actually used one. Little black jobs, you know what I'm talking about. Something that you have in your collection and you don't remember what it does. It came in a box, it came with something, it's probably some specific adapter for some camera or eyepiece or something. And because it came in the box, you've kept it and you've kept it for about 10 years and you've got no idea where it goes anymore. But you'll keep it there anyway because 
Maybe you need it one day. For now though, it's useless. Dust caps. They're a bestseller for some reason. I don't know why. What happens with dust caps for me is that they're in the box when I take something out. I take the dust cap out, I put the thing on my telescope, and then the dust cap sits on the shelf for the rest of its life. If I ever take something off the telescope, I put it in a Ziploc sandwich bag. Uh, these things are little dust collectors, and I don't want them coming in and out of my equipment. Dust caps, completely useless. How many times have you got an Allen key from some sort of astronomy vendor and you've used it for the setup and then it sits there forever? The real irony is that I will lose this thing and I'll have to build. I think I've probably got about four sets of Allen keys just for one specific size that I continually lose. But really, if you're watching this and you make astronomy equipment, don't use Allen screws or hex screws, please. If they're not regular screws, please make, just make them some sort of thumb screw, uh, even if they're small. Thumb screws are just so much more convenient and it saves us having to go to third parties to buy a thumb screw later. Allen keys and different size apertures for screws is just super annoying. Instructions. Do you have a set of instructions sitting in a nice plastic sheet on your bookshelf filed away just in case you need it? I mean, do you really need instructions to use a telescope? It's a tube with glass on it. At the most, it might have some sort of cooling system which is essentially on or off. Other than that, all you need are the specs which are the general sizes for connecting different things to it. Sometimes you get instructions from brands and they actually try to explain astronomy as a concept, which is a massive concept. You'd need a library of information to explain that. Obviously, it's nice to have some sort of guidance, uh, but if you're like me, you get instruction manuals and you don't even look at them. You just put things together and figure it out because it's pretty straightforward, unless it's some sort of complicated digital hardware or something like that. Most of the time, even with cameras, it's plug and play. The number one most useless piece of astronomy equipment I can think of is... <laughs> An eyepiece, or your eyes, basically visual astronomy. Uh, really, if you're still using eyepieces, that's good. It's fun to show the family, it's fun to show your neighbors, uh, but you really need to grow up and do some proper astronomy. Get yourself a digital camera and get into this fascinating hobby. You are letting yourself, your telescope, and your parents down by not getting into astrophotography. <laughs>